I'm Carolyn Leffley, I'm a photographic artist based in Somerset and I'm interested in cameraless photography. I initially started about 10 years ago working with the cyanotype process which is um, sensitive to UV light and also known as sunprint. But this year I've become more interested in plant-based prints called anthotypes. So I'm going to show you how to do these today. Anthotypes comes from the Greek word anthos, which means flower. And anthotypes can be made with flowers, berries, or plants. So you need to make your own emulsion from this natural material. Then you need to paint it onto a thick paper or watercolor paper, or even fabric. And then you need to print the anthotype by exposing it to sunlight. Now that's where a lot of patience comes in because sometimes exposures can take weeks. Um, I've tried to select a couple of examples which will be slightly quicker than that. We're going to be working with spinach, which you can achieve a result in around four hours in strong sunlight, and also blackberries. The first stage is to gather some natural material to make your emulsion. You could make prints with berries, as this gives a really strong, vivid coloured print. In this film, I'm going to be using blackberries, as these are widely available in the hedgerows in August and September time. You could also use raspberries or elderberries. Remember to be safe when foraging for berries in the natural environment. I'll give you some foraging safety tips at the end of the film. You could use flower petals, Dandelions are a great starting point as they are commonly found and you can make an emulsion really easily with dandelion petals. Pansies also give a really strong colour. Lilies, marigold and poppies are good to use too. You can make prints with leaves. The first amphotypes I made were from locally foraged wild garlic leaves which grows in woodlands in springtime. You can also use spinach, wild spinach which is a coastal plant and even lawn grass can be used. In this film, I'm using spinach, which I bought from a shop. Spinach is a really good starting point because you can get really vivid prints with quite a quick exposure time. The next stage is making the emulsion, which you will then paint onto your prints. And there are two ways to do this, either using a pestle and mortar or a blender. With the pestle and mortar method, this is great for small quantities, such as when you're using berries or flower petals. You can see here an emulsion is forming very quickly. When you're using berries, you don't really need to add any extra liquid. However, if you're using flower petals, you might need to add a small amount of water. The other method using a blender is best for larger quantities such as leaves. In this film, I'm using a stick blender. If you're using leaves, add a little liquid. In this film, I've used water, but some people prefer to use distilled water or even a small amount of alcohol for a stronger colour. However, water is fine, especially when doing this activity with children. Once you've blended your natural material, it will make a paste, and this needs to be strained through a sieve, lined with some fabric such as a muslin, and this is to remove all the seeds and bits so they don't appear on your final print. The next stage is coating the paper, and it's best to do this away from direct sunlight. I'm using a sponge brush in this film, but a normal paintbrush would be fine. Two coats is best for a stronger base colour, but with some brighter emulsions such as blackberries, one coat can be fine. Spinach is a really good place to start, as when it's blended, it makes an extremely light sensitive emulsion, so it has a quicker exposure time in the sunlight, sometimes around three or four hours. And this makes it quite rewarding for a first time try at the amphotype process. The next stage is to lay out your plant material. Once your paper has dried, it's time to design your print. A natural material can make a really good photo stencil. Try not to use anything that's too thick, as it needs to compress under a frame. In this example, I've used a blackberry bramble. Once you're happy with your layout, it needs to be compressed under either a glass or perspex frame. This is for two reasons. The exposure time is quite long, so we don't want your plant material blowing away. And the other reason is once it's compressed, it gives a sharper photo stencil outline for your sun exposure. Then it comes to the final stage, 
exposing to sunlight. Find a sunny spot in your garden or perhaps a windowsill. Spinach will take around three or four hours in strong sunlight to make an exposure, but blackberries will be a lot longer, two days in this example, but it could have done with four days or perhaps even longer. What you want is strong contrast between the bleach area and the bit that was hidden underneath your photo stencil. This will take a bit of experimentation, but you'll see the colour fading. And once you're happy that the sun bleaching has occurred, you can carefully remove the glass and your plant material. And there you have your final print. If it's left in direct sunlight, however, it's going to fade because it's a temporary artwork. If you keep it safe in a sketchbook or drawer or away from direct sunlight, it will last possibly for years. If you keep it on a windowsill in sunlight, your photo stencil will eventually fade. You can also use photographic images printed onto inkjet acetates to make an image. With the Amphotype process, a positive image is required. You can make a photographic print with this method with an image shot on either a film or digital camera. So the possibilities are endless with this traditional process. To recap, to make an Amphotype print, you'll need plants, berries or flowers to work with. I've used spinach, blackberries and dandelions. You'll also need some way to mix the material together, either a pestle and mortar or a blender. You'll need a sieve and fabric such as muslin to strain the solution. And you'll also need something to coat your emulsion onto. I've used watercolour paper, but you could also use thick paper, card or fabric such as cotton. You'll need a foam brush or a standard brush and a glass or perspex clip frame or picture frame. And finally, I'd like to recommend this book on amphotypes by Malin Fabry. One last thing to add, you really need sunlight as we're using the photosensitive qualities of plants. Summertime is the perfect time to try amphotypes. Enjoy experimenting with natural materials and the slow pace of this traditional process. <laughs>